Alright, so this video we're going to look at hypothesis testing and this is going to be a right-tailed test and sigma is unknown. Okay, so we don't know the population standard deviation. So in, you know, in population, I mean in hypothesis testing we can have a one-tailed or a two-tailed. Okay, the one-tailed it's either a left-tailed or a right-tailed and then you've got the two-tailed that's left and right. So for hypothesis testing we have the claim about the mu, the population mean. So H naught is we're saying mu is equal to some number and the alternate hypothesis we believe that mu is greater than the value stated in H naught, you know, maybe based on a sample that we have. Um, and so, and you know, for a right tail, it's greater than, so our alternate hypothesis would be mu is greater than k. And we need to calculate a test statistic, and that is a t value. Uh, that's from that's using the student's t distribution. This is when sigma is unknown. If sigma is known, we can use the uh, we'll use the normal distribution. You can I've got some videos on that where sigma is known. So here t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n, and the degrees of freedom is n minus one. We need the degrees of freedom to to look up the values. <coughs> In the, in the student's t distribution table. So we have x bar is the mean of a sample, of a simple random sample. Mu is the value stated in the null hypothesis, h naught. S is the sample standard deviation. See, in this case, we don't know sigma, so we don't know the population standard deviation. We only know the sample standard deviation. And n is the sample size. And then to conclude the test, how do we conclude it using the p-value? Uh, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, alpha is your level of significance, we reject, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the data are statistically significant at the level alpha. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, fail to reject h naught h naught is the null hypothesis. So let's take a look at our example. It says a random sample of adult coyotes in a certain region showed the average age to be x bar equals 2.05 years with sample standard deviation s equals 0.82 years. Okay so that's based on you know well let's see uh, that's based on the on the number of coyotes we had. And it says, however, it is thought that the overall population mean age of coyotes is mu equals 1.75 years. So that's the population, the, the population mean. Do the sample data indicate that coyotes in this region tend to live longer than the average of 1.75 years? says use alpha equals 0 0.01. Okay, and when I typed up the problem, I left some information out. We wouldn't be able to work it. Uh, a random sample of 46 adult coyotes. Okay, got to have the number. So this uh, sample mean and sample standard deviation this mean and this standard deviation is based on these 46 adult coyotes. This mean is based on all the population in that region. Okay, this is just 46 of them in that region. Okay, so you can see we don't have the population standard deviation. We only have the sample standard deviation. So do the sample do the sample data indicate that coyotes in this region tend to live longer than the average of 1.75 years? All right, so this is a one-tail test. It's a right-tail test because 
they want to know do they tend to live longer so that's greater than so we have our null hypothesis H naught so the claim is mu equals 1.75 and our alternate hypothesis see we're claiming that uh, they're older so we think mu is greater than 1.75 and so let's see what let's see what happens so we need our test statistic t is x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n where in this problem x bar is 2.05 uh, s is 0.82 mu is 1.75 n which I'd left out but there it is that 46 should be right there so that's 46 and then we need our degrees of freedom which is n which is 46 minus 1 and that's 45 okay so let's calculate our test statistic so t is x bar minus the mean over s which is 0.82 divided by the square root of n which is 46 all right so we get 2.481 okay and our degrees of freedom is 45 okay so now let's go to our table and look up the 2.481 with degrees of freedom 45 all right so here we have the students t distribution table and I'm looking up 2.481 okay it's a right tailed okay this value here that's 2.481 Okay, and I'm looking for this area here all right so remember our degrees of freedom was 45 so I need to come here to see this is this is my degrees of freedom this column here so that's 45 so I am dealing with this row this row right here and I am looking for 2.481 so let's see 2.481 2.4 okay so there's 2.412 and 2.69 well 2.481 is between those two numbers right so if we look and we go up to the top here now we have a one tail area okay we don't have a two tail see we want to the to the right so that's a one tail area so we are looking at just this row here this top row see the one tail area and we know that our probability our area is going to be between this value and this value because see for 2.412 that area is 0 0.010 and for 2.69 that area is this one 0 0.005 so we know our area is between those two okay so I mean we didn't we can't find find it exactly based on this table we could if we used Excel and I'll do some videos on all of these using Excel I don't know when I'll get to them but I'll have them up okay so what we do know is that our p-value is between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01. Okay, so if we come back to our 
problem. We know that based on the 2.481 and degrees of freedom 45, our p-value is between, let's see, 0 0.005 and 0 0.01, I believe it was. Yeah, and 0 0.01. Okay, so our p-value is between these two values. Okay. Okay, so we're testing this against alpha equals 0 0.01. So alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Now, if you look at this, you see we have this value here is less than alpha. This value here, well, that value actually equals alpha. Okay, but our p-value is between these two. Our p-value is less than the point zero 0.01. Actually, this entire interval here is less than point zero 0.01 because we're not including the point zero 0.01. We're not including the point zero zero 0.005. See, we don't have the less than or equal to here. Okay, so we can say that our p-value is less than alpha. Okay. All right. So, so we will say that our p-value is less than alpha point zero one. And so, what does that mean if it's less than? Well, we reject the null hypothesis H naught. All right, so what does that mean? Well, at the 1% level of significance, remember 0 0.01, that's the same thing as 1%. Okay, so at the 1% level of significance, the sample data of the, the 46 adult wolves or coyotes, I mean, see, of the 46, okay, the, uh, the sample data indicate that the average age of coyotes in that region is higher than 1.75 because we rejected the null hypothesis and we made the claim that it was greater than 1.75, okay? All right, so I hope this video helped. Uh, I will be doing, you know, I'm gonna have, I've got, I'm, I'll have videos of all the hypothesis testing, sigma known, sigma unknown, and the proportion P, and I will do left tail, right tail, and two tail on each of them, and I will do each of them in separate videos, because you can see these videos tend to run long. We're over 13 minutes, so hope, hope this helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.